Hey guys, this is Mr. Green for Go Green Investments. It is Sunday, July the 18th, 2021, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about AMC today and specifically about West Christian. There has been a little bit of controversy with respect to a lawsuit that was to have been brought by a private party, uh, having Mr. Christian represent that private party uh, in that particular lawsuit to investigate market manipulation. So let's dive right into that video. Please do like this channel and subscribe and also hit that notification button. So guys, what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about Wes Christian and the controversy surrounding that particular individual. Now, Wes is, a, is an attorney. Uh, he has done work with respect to SEC issues. Uh, and that type of uh, SEC law, which is uh, a fairly specialized uh, type of legal practice. He is the managing partner of Christian Levine uh, Law Group. Uh, their law firm is situated at ChristianLevineLaw.com. Now, the controversy kind of came about at the middle of the last trading week and kind of exacerbated itself towards the end of the trading week. And in short, uh, what basically happened was a private individual had decided to approach Mr. Christian with respect to possibly filing a civil suit for um, market manipulation amongst other uh, prospective charges, civil charges, uh, I would imagine, um, as they delved into that particular case. Now, I can tell you firsthand that Mr. Christian, along with many, many attorneys that I know personally, part of their part of being involved in the law, unfortunately, is the fact that you deal with a lot of less than reputable individuals. Now, I don't know the individual uh, in particular or specifically uh, whom uh, approached Mr. Christian. But what I can say to you is this, that many attorneys, uh, part of the challenge of being involved in law is the fact that you are approached by crackpots all the time and they may have less than desirable intentions, uh, maybe fraudulent intentions. Um, but some of the people that you have to deal with in the legal field are, uh, are a challenge and I'm putting that kindly. So let's just look at a little bit of, uh, Wes's background. So he's a managing partner of Christian Levine law firm, fourth generation Texan has practiced law in Texas for over 40 years. Uh, he has decades of experience in handling a wide range of complex civil litigation matters. Primary focus in the last several years has been suing Wall Street for stock manipulation, oil and gas companies for royalty fraud, and banks for aiding and abetting Ponzi schemes. So he has, he has done a deep dive into this particular type of fiduciary law. It's specialized. It is not easy. And uh, he has... Uh, as of late in the ape community, um, done a few interviews uh, that uh, brought his name onto the scene. So people recognize the name. I'm sure you recognize the name. But in, in any case, one of the catalysts this past week was the fact that he had been approached about market manipulation and possibly representing this private individual. Okay, so let's look, at, uh, dive a little bit deeper and let's look at a, a Reddit subgroup, uh, which is AMC Stock. Um, now, I did see a bit of an interview with Matt Coors, uh, where Matt interviewed Mr. Christian and talked about a gentleman by the name of Chad. I don't know a lot about Chad. I do know that he is supposedly a veteran. He was a private individual who approached Mr. Christian about filing a lawsuit. Uh, this type of thing, this type of uh, interaction happens between potential clients and lawyers every single day. However, in this particular case, obviously, because it involved the ape community, it did serve as a catalyst, and that's okay. Uh, what you can see here is it says, uh, an individual says, I am down to donate to the GoFundMe when homeboy Chad verifies it via video or via live stream before everyone goes donating to the wrong link. In any case, uh, Wes did uh, verify that this individual Chad was a real person. Uh, no last names were mentioned. Uh, one thing that was mentioned was very problematic and, and, and that set the red flags off for me was this. Mr. Christian in his interview with Matt Coors mentioned the fact that Chad had posted uh, his fee schedule, uh, Mr. Christian or Mr. Christian's law firm's fee schedule 
publicly. I have not seen that. I really haven't looked for it, to be honest. No need to. But in any case, uh, when you when you uh, retain a lawyer, whether it's on contingency or by the hour, they will have you sign a client agreement. And in that client agreement, it will specify a number of things, including percentages of awards and so on and so forth, and many disclaimers. But the fact of the matter is that what was very problematic about this whole thing was that Chad took it upon himself to publicly display uh, this client agreement and fee schedule uh, to the ape community and to go public with it, which was absolutely unequivocally ridiculous and stupid quite frankly, to do that. Um, he was immediately admonished by Mr. Christian. And as time moved a little bit forward, I think what we have seen is the fact that Chad may turn out to be, for lack of a better term, uh, a, a, a crackpot or uh, a, a, an unreputable possible client. Look, this is what happens in the law community all the time. Um, wherein a lawyer talks to a potential client, uh, the potential client has some issues, whatever they may be, and uh, the attorney chooses at that time to disassociate themselves with the client and release that client. And the reverse can happen as well, where a client can release a lawyer because they're just not seeing eye to eye or whatever the case may be. Uh, in any case, this is what was said on the subreddit uh, AMC stock, and we also uh, saw that interview with Matt Coors. Okay, so what happens if GoFundMe is set up? Because if you guys think that, uh, that an attorney like Mr. Christian or any other reputable attorney is going to work free of charge in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, especially cases like this where it's going to require a high level of specialized investigations and experts and a lot of time. That is not a case that uh, an attorney like Mr. Christian would take on a contingency, which means that they are working uh, free of charge unless an award is achieved, whereby they will earn a percentage of that award. Typically that award, if they do not have to go to court is 33 and a third percent for the law firm or the attorney or attorneys, plural, and 66.6% or 66% um, for the plaintiff. Uh, however, in this particular case, um, Mr. Christian, I think, was very clear, and we'll listen to that. Credit uh, Matt Kors, uh channel for the upcoming video, but I wanted to play just a snippet of that, uh, wherein Mr. Christian and Matt have a little bit of a conversation about that particular matter as it relates to the GoFundMe page that was set up. Now, under normal circumstances with full disclosure, you know, there's a great way to be able to put all these things together. I think it was rushed. I think that the parties weren't vetted properly and now you've had kind of a backlash. So let's listen in. Practices, frankly. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we definitely appreciate that. So overall, just folks listening in, this is the start of it. We can confirm it's a thing. Mr. Christian is working with Chad. There, I will reach out to Chad myself, get him on here. Uh, Mr. Christian isn't himself tied with the GoFundMe or anything like that. I'm not. Um, no, he's I'm not tied not, with it. No, We're just trying to... I have but, nothing to do with it. Yeah. So. I'm just trying to let everyone know that this is a real thing. And I know I only have a couple more minutes with you. Um, but while you're here, I really want to, I guess, if you're willing to, you use the term financial cancer. And I think that's heavy. And I actually think it's accurate. I'm not disagreeing with you here. But uh, a couple... There, Within this community, it's a lot of people who are new to the market, new to the, especially the legalities of the market of what is and isn't possible. If you can or can Okay, so we can stop right there. But in any case, I, I think uh, where part of the misnomer, the red flag started to go off, um, is after the fact, uh, in as much as uh, Mr. Christian did verify that uh, Chad was a real person, uh, I don't think that he had vetted that potential client uh, thoroughly enough. Um, that is a mistake that I would not have expected. Although, uh, in in his uh, in his favor, I would say that look, he was contacted by an individual. He doesn't know, you know, most of the individuals that probably approach him as potential clients. You know, he doesn't know them, and he's got to get to know them, and he's got to take case notes and to vet that case and uh, make sure that that individual. 
uh, is on the up and up. Um, so it's a, it's a relationship between a client and attorney and not all of those relationships work, I can tell you personally. Uh, but in any case, they were talking about the GoFundMe that was set up in order to fund this particular lawsuit. Now, I have absolutely no qualms whatsoever about that particular type of fundraising effort taking place um, to fund a lawsuit of this type. However, were I to have um, you know, taken the lead on something like this, what I probably would have done is I would have said to myself, first of all, look, I think I'm gonna file a lawsuit here. There is clear and obvious market manipulation. I'm gonna reach out to a lawyer. Uh, and you know, I happen to see Mr. Christian, who is situated in Texas. He seems to be on the up and up, seems knowledgeable about the subject. He's got a history in this particular type of law. I'm gonna contact him. So I contact him, we talk on the phone, we discuss the case, we build a rapport and so on and so forth. But at that time, I would probably advise him that look, I'm gonna need some funding for this lawsuit. I certainly cannot fund this all myself. He probably mentioned that there's a possibility of a class action in this particular case. Uh, and, um, you know, and then you head forward from there with respect to how you approach fundraising efforts. But here's the thing that we all need to realize here. Um, these attorneys don't work for free. Lawsuits are very expensive, especially a lawsuit like this that is going to involve uh, experts, experts, expert testimony, testimony, and a lot of investigation. investigation. You're, you're talking, talking about, about a, uh, again, again talking, talking about, about a deep dive. dive. You're, you're talking, talking about a heavy, heavy drill down, down into this attorney trying to subpoena records and to sort through the literal menagerie of, of you know, hidden, underhanded. You can, you can just, just imagine what type of muck this guy would have to wade through to get to the bottom of the case. However, I will also say that this type of lawsuit really, in my opinion, would be better suited for a class action suit of apes who wanted to come together and put the funds together to retain a lawyer like Mr. Christian or someone of equal capability and to let them go to work. Um, that is the way to handle it. I think that, uh, that the way this transpired was unfortunate and it also transpired with, uh, transpired with some other news uh, that we'll discuss here shortly. Okay, so I hope that I shed some light on the uh, potential lawsuit issue. Now we'll see where that goes, but right now, um, in my opinion, uh, I would not send any money to a GoFundMe. I don't think that Mr. Christian has, uh, has uh, probably agreed to this particular uh, attorney-client relationship. I haven't talked to him personally, but I could probably guess that that relationship is over, especially after posting their fee schedule, which was just a total dumbass move. <clears throat> In any case, let's move on to the next subject, and that is Ape Fest. These two things kind of happened at the same time, um, so I just wanted to address it. As you can see on your screen, I've got Trey's trades pulled up and credit to his channel on this particular clip. But, uh, and, and Trey is a guy, he's a young guy, he's an army officer, uh, he, he's a good guy, and I think that he has everybody's best interest uh, just as a friend and a, and a good person. He wants all of us to win in this particular uh, situation. We all want to win in the ape community. Uh, and I think that he's been a pretty good guide um, for helping people, you know, keep their expectations in line, giving great technical analysis. He just seems like a good guy, which is, which is a good thing. In any case, the, what I wanted to play for you was, uh, what turned out to be a pretty emotional, uh, testimonial on Trey's part with respect to this Ape Fest. Now, Ape Fest, if you don't know, is a pro proposed Las Vegas festival for the ape community. Now, uh, at its at its at its on the surface and at on its face, it doesn't seem like a big deal. And Trey will go on, as you will hear, to to say that look, you know, we need to stop attacking each other. You know, some people may think this is a good idea, some people may not. But I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. He goes on to say, 
I'm going to give you my opinion on Ape Fest at this time. And my opinion is just worth what it's worth. But I, I think I say it with some qualification. I don't think it's a good idea to hold Ape Fest for a number of different reasons. But let me just bullet point. The main reason that I believe that Ape Fest is a bad idea is the fact that, well, one is the prefacing reason is we've done well, we've won so far, but we haven't really won, if you know what I mean. Nothing monumental that warrants um, that warrants this type of activity, just in my opinion, um, really has happened yet. And that is a precursor to what I will say next. And the main reason why I would suggest not holding this ape fest type of event is because that it could be misconstrued by the SEC as an attempt to collude to manipulate a stock. So it could have a big backfire event as a result of maybe a very, very innocent attempt by some folks just to have a good time. But these are the things that I can promise you that hedge funds will use. If you do not think the hedge funds will turn around as, as filthy as they can be, if you not, do not believe that they will contact FINRA and the S SEC and tell them that, hey, this is an attempt to collude and move the price and influence the price and so on and so forth, and they've got money for legal, so we all know that. Guys, that's why it's not a good idea. I am not against anybody having a good time, celebrating the movement, having a good time, music, food, blah, blah, blah. Hey, but also that's a lot of money we could be taking advantage of in the ape community and making, thing happen, making things happen with the stock, quite frankly. But just to be safe, to play it safe, to protect each other, it would be a great idea, I think, to just postpone this for a bit, make, make plans for a future event. But this, we don't want to provide any fuel for the fire, any reason whatsoever to have this influence uh, you know, negatively on the movement. We've all worked very hard with our level of patience, our hard-earned money, to make sure that this thing goes forward, it's going in a positive direction, and I think we can win. But something like this could completely throw the whole movement out of whack. So let's celebrate when the battle's won, okay? And let's play a little bit of trade, of Trey, sorry. This weekend, right? There was a, a, a freaking GoFundMe situation and you have the Ape Fest, which is driving people, you know, in different opinions, in different directions, and you've got sort of a, a lot of opinions and a lot of noise that, that's kind of circulating on the internet, whether it be Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, blah, 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 you know, the whole spiel here. There's there's a lot of stuff that's kind of happened that I wanted to give you essentially my explanation on these two topics. So I'm going to talk about this GoFundMe that was essentially put together by Wes Christian and this man down here named Chad Brewer, because I had donated $300 to this GoFundMe. And I want to speak on this in case you donated money to it. You want to make a decision based on whatever facts have come out, whatever, you know, opinions you have about that whole situation i also want to talk about the ape fest uh overall right this this whole situation by the way folks as you probably saw that gofundme had already raised a hundred and fifty thousand dollars um again i just think that it's something that needs to be vetted uh i would as trey said i would probably look into trying to have your money refunded if you happen to have donated to that i'm not saying that it is a bad thing i'm, I'm not, not saying, saying that, that there are, are fraudulent, fraudulent intentions, intentions there, but I think it is very, very premature at this particular time. And as you can see, there was an intermingling of the law firm or Mr. Christian's name with the GoFundMe, and he made very clear in his statement that he did not have anything to do with that, and that would be unethical for him to do that anyway. So let's continue. Situation, what's going on here with this, uh, this essentially opportunity to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the apes right so i'm gonna start off here with the gofundme now the reason that i even came to know of this is wes christian who is an accredited lawyer who is well known for essentially being a part of taking down overstock and all that market manipulation stuff that had happened around that company he decided to step out and say look i want to essentially 
file a lawsuit against some of these big players who are manipulating the market. Exactly what AMC Stock stands for. He went on Macworth's live stream and he brought him on. They had a conversation. And he said, look, I'm going to have this GoFundMe. If you want to donate money to this, feel free to do so. If not, it's all right. It's your money. Do with it what you want to do. Right. And what ended up happening that was not very highly talked about and probably not predictable until everything blew up is this Chad Brewer guy. Right. So when you have an accredited lawyer, a guy with a pretty decent resume who's done some cool things go on a live stream and say this is what i'm going to do he's held to a higher standard that man is held to a higher standard in terms of what he does with uh you know with his words and with his money and with other people's money he's held to a higher standard so in my brain thinking these things and this is where i was wrong and i'll always come out and admit to people when i'm wrong and when i make mistakes where i was wrong is not questioning who this chad brewer guy is because chad brewer i'm not here to pass judgment i'm not here to essentially defamate anybody this is you know your decision and your opinion to make has a history of uh, fraudulence and i don't know what the degree is I, I don't know what he did i don't know what his actions were i don't know what the rep rep repercussions were but there's a lot of uh you know, justifiably so, opinions about him being the one to organize this overall fundraiser. Now, like I said, where I went wrong is I did not question before I donated three hundred dollars. Who? Okay, there's kind of the, there's kind of the point, and I and I appreciate uh, Trace stepping up, which he has done in the past. If he felt like he was uh, wrong or incorrect about something, he steps up and takes responsibility. But the fact of the matter is, here, guys, you saw probably a premature attempt and. Look, these GoFundMe uh, situations, uh, for the most part, it's it's a great tool to raise money for something like this, uh, for and for just a plethora of other great things. But in this particular case, over 44 pe 4,400 people donated to this, and the fact of the matter is, you know, we've got we we we've got a uh, an attorney client situation that doesn't look like it's very stable. Um, we've got a reputation issue with the organizer, um, and we've got what essentially turns out to be some infighting in the ape community. So, and, and I'll stop with that particular issue, but back to ape fest, the, the problem with the ape fest thing I described to you is we don't want anything misconstrued. We don't want to give anyone, especially an official body such as FINRA or the F SEC, any reason whatsoever to question what we are doing and how we are doing it. So that is why I might suggest that we stand back, take a deep breath, we can save celebrations till the end. So in closing, guys, I hope that the information in this video has been helpful to you. Uh, again, I kind of vote down uh, for Ape Fest right now. Let's let's put a hold on that, postpone until it's time to celebrate and to avoid any conflicts or confusion or uh, legal issues at all. Look, if you want to make a difference, um, on your screen you'll see the uh, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Send them an email. Go on their Twitter page. Go to FINRA's page. I did so today. Make them... Uh, aware of how you feel if you believe there's uh, manipulation. That's why these folks are there. And surprisingly, surprisingly, they seem to be kind of supporting the community. Uh, of course, we we wish for uh, more immediate results. There's lots of things that need addressed, but for whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent, we have seen some movement uh, with respect to new rules and regulations being released as our community, the ape community, moves forward. In any case, I appreciate you being here today with me. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Keep pushing. Look forward to Monday. Buy and hodl. Buy and hodl. That's your job. Buy and hodl. The movement will happen when the movement happens on the stock. Everything is going to be okay. Just hang in there. Okay, so for Go Green Investments, I am Mr. Green, and I appreciate you being with me today and good trading tomorrow when the market opens.